love that you're all here. So what I'd like to do to start out, because again, we're a small group, is to do a little go around and to share what is your challenge or what do you want to learn about working a room? Because as Charlene said, I am a, I'm an introvert and I call myself a recovering introvert. So I've had to learn the skills of how to work a room. And I still use those skills today. So I'm excited to share them with you. But so Sarah, would you mind starting and tell us who you are, where you're calling in from, and what are some of your challenges with working a room? Sure, I'm Sarah Press. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm an introvert by all definition of the word. Um, you know, I've come to grow, I guess, to be more comfortable over time speaking publicly. I'm not great at it and I don't enjoy it. Um, but I still see that like when I am in a room with people I don't know and I need to network, like I'm just not the person that goes up to people and starts talking. I'm always the person kind of waiting or like standing on the sidelines between two other people who are talking. So, <laughs> so I don't necessarily have to be the focus of attention. Um, so I, you know, obviously would, would benefit from kind of moving beyond um, where I'm comfortable now and, and getting the skills to be able to do just that. Great to move in. What do you say? What do you do? How to come across more confident? Excellent. Good. Thank you. And Gina, what about you? Tell us a little bit about you, your photographer, and your working the room. Whoops, yeah, you have to unmute. I was muted. <laughs> you were muted. Well, I don't know if I would call myself a total introvert. I'm really good at networking. I get out a lot. I'm very active in the community and I, and I know a lot of people. So I'll walk into a room with strangers and I just kind of walk up to a crowd and start conversation. But I think where I fail is going into it with a goal and uh, following up and creating those conversations that allows me to follow up easily because I just make friends. You know, I go in there and it's easy. I smile, I start to talk, have general conversation. And I think that's still great for, um, you know, referral businesses and building relationships. But I fail on the actual, you know, purpose of the actual working the room part. <laughs> or what to do next so it sounds like you've got right. a bubbly personality you become friends but then it's like why did I do this and I'm not getting any business from it or okay yeah all right good we'll address all those excellent thank you and uh Dr. Stephen Steve Kane if you're there if you can hear us even if you're not on video can you pipe in and tell us a little bit about Hi. you this is um my name is Marcia Kane and um my husband actually is a Cal Poly professor and so I'm actually using his Zoom oh, account okay, good. and so bear with me this is like my first time doing Zoom and so good I wasn't you. Able, yeah yeah I wasn't access um the video for some reason I tried to uh to uh open up the video for some reason and we're having some technical difficulties with this laptop so bear with me but um That's I got fun. yeah so um yeah, so um, I'm a massage therapist, and um, with the pandemic and everything going on, um, I need to, um, uh, you know, re-educate myself and, you know, explore other possibilities, um, especially things are hanging on, you know, with it going longer than we had anticipated. So I'm trying to build my skills, and um, I also am an introvert, and the one nice thing about massage therapy was you know, on a one-to-one -one basis, I'm pretty confident. Um, but in a in large settings, when it comes to public speaking or meeting new people, um, per se, I uh, have a tendency to be shy. And then I'm I'm one of those people that, um, as you get to know me, um, you know, um, I'm well liked. But it's those initial uh, moments when you meet someone one-on-one -on -one for that very first time, getting that confidence. To really sell myself um, in those initial, you know, moments, I think is, is something that I need to really work on because that's, you know, again, you don't always have a long time to, you know, capture those clients and things like that. So that's something that I need to focus on and just putting myself out there more. And uh, that's that's my goal right now. Good. That's perfect. So your first name is Marsha. Is that what you said? Yeah, my first name is Marsha, and my last name is Kane. 
And you are a massage therapist. Yeah, and then I'm, I'm uh, also um, a photographer and um, also want to be, uh, I'm now training to be um, like a social media um, specialist, you know, using my uh, photography and, and promoting people in small businesses and things like that. So I'm constantly uh, working on that in this moment in time as well. Oh, good. So that we, so many people need you. That's perfect. And what I'm really hearing is almost the first impressions that we're going to talk about. Right, right. How are you coming? Can we see you? Can we, can you? You know what? Unfortunately, I can't, for some reason, I'm clicking off the, um, you know, the start video and to get the little X off. And for some reason it's coming up and it says, cannot start a video, failed to start the video camera. Please select another video camera in the setting. So it could be that with this laptop, I'm, I got a new computer. I'm going to get that all set up this weekend. So um, we just, uh, my husband actually is, um, He's working from home now. Um, so he's actually um, working with some clients right now with some students. So um, I wasn't able to use the big computer. <laughs> and so I have done Zoom on the big computer where we have a camera. So we just had a scramble because it, it just this class coincided with his, uh, his appointments with his, um, his students. So I wasn't able to use the big computer. OK, but, that's fine. As yeah. long as we're here, we're present. Yeah. That's good. Okay. So a couple more. Let's see. Ga Gabrielle, if I'm saying your name right, can you tell us? I know that even the work that you do, that you work for the organization. But any challenges or any specific areas in working in the room that you can share with us? Um, you know, to be quite honest with you, Heidi, I am brand new in the role, as Charlene had mentioned, and I'm here as a spectator pretty much okay. <laughs> just to get a better idea on how our workshops are handled and how they flow, to be okay. quite honest. And I'm also just trying to see what tidbits I might be able to learn from your workshop as well. I don't really have any challenges right off the bat to really specify. So I'm more or less just a spectator right now. Okay, great. And if there's anything, questions or things that might be triggered or feel free to pop in. You can you have your video. Uh, I'm actually walking in downtown Salt Lake City. Oh, I love it. everyone's friends. Well, just tell us what your challenge is then regarding uh, working the room. Um, I don't know if I have a challenge. I wanted to see if, because I'm an introvert, but I'm in business for myself. And let me stop walking so I can talk. Um, and I just want to see tips and tricks because uh, I help a lot of families and I protect them with insurance. And I, I always want to do the right thing being a veteran. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just want to see if I'm actually working a room or if I need to improve. Um, and I, I don't mean to say actually working, but a room, but being a hundred percent engaged and uh, doing everything I can to help who I'm sitting in front of or zooming in front of. So I just want to learn, you know, I'm always looking to improve myself. So I don't know if I have a challenge at this point, but uh, I want to see your expertise because that's how we learn from others. So I'm just here with an open mind and heart. Great. Thank that, you. And sometimes they're just <laughs> reminders. Sometimes we know some of these things, but we forget about it and to do it intentionally. Okay, so the last person and we'll get going is Kathy, who I know. Kathy, I'm glad you were able to log on. So we're just saying what we might think, do we have any concerns or struggles or what we would like to learn today in working a room? So anything off the top of your head? Well, go ahead and unmute yourself, we can't hear you. Is that better, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I tend to stray from the subject sometimes, or I'll uh, get distracted uh, when I'm talking to someone. Um, like I'll, I'll like start to make my point, and then I kind of lose my point, and then I kind of just, I, I kind of lose the attention of the person I'm talking to. Okay. Are you still there? I didn't know. Sometimes I get nervous and freeze. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm still here. Yeah. Can okay. you see me? Okay. Yeah, we can see you. Okay. okay. Okay, and sometimes with the PowerPoint, um, Charlene, was there anything you wanted to jump in and say? You know, I, I think for myself, you know, San Luis Obispo is a very um, people oriented type of community. And so I find that I enjoy, I really enjoy doing networking events. I love, you know, and we're starting to get back to that now. Um, but what I get stuck in is talking to the people I know 
instead of, you know, taking the time to really get out and meet the people that I don't know and form new relationships. So, you know, I want to try and stay a little bit more focused because that's the whole point of us being there at, at different events is to promote our Women's Business Center to people who aren't aware of what we do. Good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, again, I like to be very interactive and again, I have my 10 tips. There's many more than that, that I'm going to go through. I have a couple of just basic slides and sometimes the PowerPoint is I'm having a little challenge now. Charlene and I worked on it, but I'm just going to go into just getting started with my number one tip. And uh, we just brought this up a couple of minutes ago is that first impression. Okay, the first impression of networking. Now, again, just to give you a little bit of my background, as an introvert, I was the gal and I was living in Los Angeles at the time that I would go to a networking event. I would walk in the room. I wouldn't see anybody I know. I was all dressed up, had my business cards, feeling all professional. I would become about five years old and run to the ladies room and hope I'm going to come out when the meeting starts. I don't know anyone. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. But I used to watch because those of us we know as introverts, we watch what others do. And I would see all these powerful women and they would walk into the room and they had confidence and they had a smile and they were there for business. And people just ran up to them. There was something about them that attracted people to them. I wanted that because I didn't want to be the shy little girl, but I didn't really know what are they doing? What are they not doing? So as I started working for a women's organization in Los Angeles that's still in existence and studying these women and getting my own coaching, I had to kind of get out of my own way and create a step-by-step process to help me feel more comfortable. And since then, for the last 20, 25 years, I've been sharing these tools with people. So again, the next time you're in an awkward situation, whether it's business, whether it's like today virtual, whether it's a cocktail party, whether it's a fundraiser, whether you're going over to a friend's house who's hosting a party to help you in being more comfortable and confident in your own skin. And if you're quietly selling people, what's the first impression that you're making? So I have a little test for you. I call this popcorn. You can just pop out an answer. You can put it in the chat or raise your hand. People make impressions about you. How long do you think it is? This is a little test question. How long do you think it takes for somebody to make an impression about you? Anybody just come up with a number. How long do you think it takes? Go ahead, Gina. 10 milliseconds. 10 milliseconds. That's a good one. Okay, good. <laughs> That's really good. Anybody else? Anybody else have any other ideas or put it in the chat? Five yeah. seconds. Five I'd seconds. say immediately. Immediately. So it's been proven it takes seven seconds. Now, in seven seconds, what do you think? What kind of judgments are they making about you? And I don't mean good or bad. But what are they thinking to themselves? And many of us just, you know, it's just unconscious. So what are some of the things they're making judgments about when they look at you? Go ahead, Gina. I would say um, um, your confidence level, your, um, your intelligence, um, your charisma, charisma, <laughs> charismatic nature, um, all kinds of stuff, your hairstyle, your wardrobe. <laughs> good. And they make it. I could go in. Yeah, but not necessarily good or bad. Anybody else? Anyone have anything else to add to that, Kathy? I think people are uh, sensitive by nature and not always, people don't always show that, but when they meet someone they connect with, uh, I think that uh, people, uh, can tell if you're approachable and warm-hearted and sensitive. People can see and sense that. Right. So that's always good. And that's a really interesting point you're bringing up because sometimes we think, well, if they just get to know me, they'll see how I am. But have we already made that impression? So it's been proven that people make 13 judgments about you before you even open your mouth. So this part of the program today is just 
checking out how do we want to come across? What are we saying to others? If we are a businesswoman, if we want to be more confident, if we want people to be attracted to us, you know, I always ask the question too, how many of you, and I go, I like that we have a few people and again, feel free to, to jump in. Um, anybody else that would like to, and a Sheila and, and Deb and Marsha, um, how many of you want to have more charisma? I do. <laughs> Usually we all get the hands up. Hands sure. Up. Okay. Yeah. So why do we want more charisma? It can more make us more likable. Than like yep. We want to be likable. We want to be memorable. Now, take yourself back to the old days when we used to travel a lot. And you're back at an airport, a big airport, not Sarah, that you're at Pennsylvania airport. We've got a small airport, but I do remember LAX. How many of you enjoy sometimes sitting there and just watching people, right? You just kind of watch people. And in your head, absolutely. Is that fun? And how many of you make up stories about the people in just those seven seconds? <clears throat> oh, that's kind of an uh, interesting person, or I like that energy. Oh, they looked harried, or they don't seem whatever it is, right? We're just going through the mind. So a part of working in the room, step one, <clears throat> is being more aware of ourselves. How are we walking into the room? How are we leading? Even in the virtual room, I'm 100% virtual now. When I teach networking, even for Erie Insurance where Sarah works on how to make that impression. And it's amazing in those couple of seconds when we're looking all stern and we have these facial movements. Bottom line is a smile is my number one skill to making a first impression. Now, some of you may be thinking, because I get pushed back all the time, but I don't feel like smiling Heidi or I wanna be more genuine. I get that, however, what's the first impression people are thinking? Have any of you, probably nobody in this room, but you know people, and I'm, I'm not going to say a bad word, but they call it the bee face, I think. You guys know the resting bee face? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Gina, you know what I'm talking about, right? Who has heard of the resting bee face? Raise your hand or put in the chat. What does that mean? Who can explain the resting bee face? Marsha, have you heard of that before? No, personally, no, I have not. Okay, good. So we see. Yeah. Who knows what the resting bee face is? I've never heard of it. Good, Sam, I'm already teach you guys something. Sarah, you've heard of it, right? Oh yeah, Isn't that... I probably have it. <laughs> okay, so let's talk I'm about probably it. probably guilty. Um, just a, a general, general sense of um, unpleasantness. Um, probably somebody who you might automatically feel is just a little miserable. Um, you know, and not, not ready to engage or at least be pleasant. I think you make that assumption based on how they, you know, shape their expression. A lot of, yes, a lot of people, it's basically having a no smile and looking serious. Now here's the psychology, remember I'm a therapist, behind closed doors, you just might be busy, you're thinking. You know, you have a resting bee face, which is kind of a, a bitty face when people are like, are you angry? What's going on, okay? However, I can't tell you every single day when I see that somebody getting on Zoom, it's the first impression. It's really hard to turn an impression around that I all of a sudden is like, ugh, that feeling of I don't really even wanna be associated with them. They could be wonderful and once I get to know them, they're great, but it's that first impression. So this is the psychology of the personal development today that we need to be aware of how are we coming across? Sometimes it feels a little fake to smile. Now, Gina knows this. And also I think it was Marsha. If you're doing photography, you've got to bring on that smile. So for those of you, that's why I like to have the cameras on. For those of you that I can see right now, I get to pick on you. So can we all put on a smile when we're told to? We're all in the selfie day age, right? We can put a smile on, right? So let's see. Let me see those smiles. I need teeth. Sarah, yeah, Sarah, show me. We have braces. There. Good, show those braces off. <laughs> Kathy, let me see your smile. There you go. And Gina, sometimes we got to fake it to her, make it. 
And you don't have to go over the top. And as simple as this sounds, I'm sure you've all heard about it. If you've been on a personal growth journey, Dale Carnegie. Have we all heard of Dale Carnegie? And there's that book. It's a wonderful book. It's an old book written by a man. Great smiles all. Thank you. Um, by a gentleman. And the book title is How to Win Friends and Influence People. Or How to Influence People and Make Friends. Either way, how to win friends and isn't it how to win friends and influence people? Is that's probably it. I like to twist things around on purpose. And you can put some of these in the chat. We can have a conversation going. Do you know that he, a man that wrote this, he has a whole chapter on smiling to be approachable. To be approachable. So I have clients that have that rust and bee face. They know it. And we work on it. It's a practice. It's about getting out your, I was looking to see if I have my mirror with me, your mirror. And to be approachable and make others feel good about themselves because that's the first impression. So that is number one, that when you walk into a room to be prepared, when you walk into a virtual room, and even though it feels weird right now, like I'm looking at you guys as boxes, I know it's not direct, but if I'm looking right at the camera, and to hold that smile, make others feel special. So this is the number one, because instead you might think, well, it sounds so basic and simple, but it's a reminder. So let me ask you, I'm going to even go deeper with this one. When does the smile begin? Where, when does the smile begin? When you connect with the person. When you connect with the person. Okay, good. How about before that? I would say when you make first eye contact. Yes, first eye contact, but I even want to go back. Those of you that are on social media, those of you that are live, we're watching you. Have you I've all seen like a live video and you can see the person, they're kind of like, am I on camera? What's going on? They're kind of making a scalp face and then all of a sudden they try to switch gears or somebody walking in to a networking event and they don't have that smile on. You start the smile, it's kind of an attitude from the inside out, this is gonna be wonderful, I am confident, I'm gonna meet new people. So it's that internal affirmation, first impressions count. So with that, that's number one, and how to work a room, even a Zoom room, get on that Zoom call, and you want to number, my second tip is whatever you do for working a room, get there early. And I mean, early could be at least 10 minutes early. Why? That's when there's, you know, the Heidi's, the Charlene speaker setting up. That's when there's other players to meet. The impression is if you're coming on, if you're really harried, if you're walking into a networking meeting late, you've got all of your purses and your binders and everything else. Remember, we're watching you. Get there early so you can maybe, if it's an in-person meeting, use the restroom, get settled in so that you've got that confidence, that walk. Again, we're making impressions about you. Are you trying to sell yourself? People forget about that. For those of you that like statistics, I want you to write this down. 55%, that's a lot. 55% of our communication is non-verbal non-verbal. So you can open your mouth, make them fall in love with you, razzle dazzle them with your, with your communication, with your jokes. They're watching you. The smile, the open body language. I still want you to be your authentic self. It shouldn't be fake, but a warm smile. 38% as a statistic is your tone of voice. How are you communicating? And only 7% of the words. So even though we're going to go over today some icebreakers and things to say, be aware. We're, right now, we're just shining the light on your nonverbal, walking into the room, having open body language, and getting there early. So that's number two. Number three, dress to impress and even on Zoom. How many of us, and I can be guilty of this, You've gotten casual because you're home, right? Being barefoot or slippers or sweats or just like, ah, we're on Zoom. It doesn't really matter. So I think you all sort of know this, but again, think of the options. 
How are you coming across? What does your Zoom room look like? Trying to have a background that talks a little bit more about who you are. Those little things, we think they're not a big thing. People are still making judgments, not necessarily good or bad. But what do you want your impression to look like? So there are things to remember. Who has a thought on this? Do you guys agree with this? Or is there pushback on that? So we're talking about first impressions is number one. Getting there early, number two. Dress to impress. So let's let's have a chat about that. Who would like to to share something about that? Um just uh my I uh, just question oh go ahead. No no you started okay. go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um you know I've got this kind of like sport jacket. I mean it's kind of is this okay? Do I look okay for Zoom? I mean for like a professional or is this too too ca casual? Well, now you're going to open up a can of worms because I'm going to tell you exactly what I think. So that's good. good. But that's what I, I need. I want critiques. So I, can I love it. Well, let's give Kathy some critiques here. So a couple of things. Now, a couple of things that I've learned along the way. This is for everyone. And then Gina had a question. In your Zoom box, okay? And I learned this from one of the gurus. You're supposed to only have an inch from your head to like the ceiling of your box because we're all in the Brady Bunch boxes, okay? So you want to be careful with your camera to make the first impression. So, you know, even, and Sarah just moved her camera a little bit, okay? So that's good. Gina's, yours is good. So we're being guinea pigs for everyone that's watching us. Now, Kathy, the good news is Kathy's an amazing artist and we can see her work, but we could probably even see it better. Can you bring your Zoom? This isn't answering your question yet but I'm going off on this. So can you move your zoom? So you're, cause you're a little bit back like this. Uh huh. So the camera, so do I need to put it up higher? Like, yeah, can I, can I uh, add a comment? Please Gina, because you're the professional photographer. Well, I love your background. I mean, and I'm being Thank very you. critical because I hate my background <laughs> and I'm really <laughs> dark right now. Yeah. <laughs> but um, technically when you're, when your camera angle is below your chin, it makes you look like you're bigger than your viewer. So mm -hmm. technically you always want to have your camera about eye level. Oh, okay. that, so that, that, that way, that way you're that way. Yeah, it's definitely too low. Oh, that yeah, way you're looking you know, into the person's see, eyes. Pretty Kathy, but the way that she's leaving, but these are like, good. So let's coach her. So even go ahead, Gina, keep coaching her. You're the expert with that. Yeah, well, no. So, I mean, the background and your lighting is great. It's just that you you probably want to get a step stool or something so that when you put yeah. your uh, iPad up, it's about eye level to okay. your I'm audience. To and that way, I'm trying to think what I could use to put um, something on there to get it to sit up on something. Yeah, like a book. Like, I'm just going to do it. See, I love it. I don't know. Does that make a difference or is it? Too it's, a, it's, a, it's a little better. I mean, you still want it to be where you're looking at it eye level. And technically, eye level. so right now yeah. you're a little bit like that. Yeah. So you want and to that, And exactly technically, if it's, if the camera is slightly above eye level too, then what happens is your eyes are going to look more open because when you're looking in the webcam, you're looking up into it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how do I look? I mean, because right now I can barely see my face. All I can see is my background. Uh, can you guys see? more yeah, because now we're only seeing you from the neck up yeah so, so this the whole yeah like if you were sitting more like that yeah that's so, better that's better that's better Tell yes way up. better you know i think i realized that the problem is i have there you I, go like right there is good then let's give her like this for the rest of the meeting <laughs> but i i'm holding this so i can't really like well you could but just for us this is just good for feedback and then yeah. I, and then what I wanted to say to Kathy, because she approached it. So one, I think with your backdrop and a, yes, professional, what I've learned though, too, in Zoom is sometimes when you just add like bright colors, right? So I'm trying to wear a bright color. Sarah, you have a great color on right now. And I know Gina, because you do photography and it's great. And you have on a collared shirt the whole bit, but um, in photography- I look like a ref though. I look like a referee. <laughs> No, you don't. There's no judgment with that. Hey, we're all behind closed doors here. We're not eliminating. Please, Deb and Marcia, do you guys have any feedback? Let's look at Kathy for a second. That looks so much better, Kathy. I'm trying to put this up a little higher, but it just, I, I think I realized what the problem is. My iPad has the, uh, the um, attached keyboard and it folds. So it's not in like a, a, like a, a position where I can put it. 
I don't know. Does that help? Well, you'll, you'll figure it out. The yeah. point is you're getting feedback. Yeah. So yeah. Sheila, Deb, Marsha, do you guys have any two cents on this? Yeah. Listen, yeah. I, I thought it looked better when um, like Gina brought up a good point of having the camera at eye level when Kathy adjusted it. It was a big difference. And I have a tendency to do that too of, um, um, on the bigger computer to be too far back. So that was um, enlightening for me. Like you said, this the inch, you know, from the box. So I also need to, to bring in that. And it, it, it is, um, I guess my um, thing adjusting to Zoom is it's weird to um, uh, see yourself, isn't it? Like a mirror of yourself. And so I noticed that you know, oh, I didn't know, you know, like all of a sudden I'm critiquing how I'm not smiling or how I look I'm like, oh, I got to get my hair done or whatever, you know, so, you know, being distracted from that. And so we are entering in this new world where learning how to be on camera and interact in this way is, you know, new for all of us. So, you know, I'm, I'm just picking up some good tips here too. And so I, um, just complimenting Kathy that, um, that, made such a huge difference that eye level could you do um when she did do that i noticed you, it does feel like you're more connected to her so, yes that's yeah. a great word then you, so you feel more connected it's yeah. the rapport so and even if we're not consciously thinking oh i can only see part of her there's something that's going on you know for a couple examples that i know gina you're going to add to this too but just for all of us for example because i run these women's networking groups and then after the fact i'll tell them i had one gal so she sells Mary Kay cosmetics. Well, she got on, you know, there were about 20, 25 women and we do commercials and like a networking group. And she was just really like no makeup on at all. And I'm like, why are you not looking the part? Be aware of how you're coming across. And then it's funny, a couple of weeks ago too, I had one gal, she was on camera the whole time, but she was eating popcorn. She was kind of eating it like this. <laughs> And, you know, I teased her lovingly, but I said, you're making an impression. I I'm watching you. I'm getting distracted. And I'm thinking you're a big wig. So we do have to shine a light. It's very important. And I know sometimes it sounds a little, sounds a little disingenuous. Why can't they love me for who I am? It's important. So Gina, and you should know, because again, if you're doing photography, you know that it's about impression. So were you going to speak to this about Anything well, I don't, I don't really remember what I was going to say before, but that's okay. <laughs> Let's I do have a quick question, though. I do have a quick question. So it's uh, supposed to be eye level. How far away from my face? How far away from me? Like, should it be like two, three feet or? Well, I would, I would go by the gauge that, um, that Heidi said about an inch, just position yourself. So you have about an inch above. No, but I mean, away from me, like, like sitting, like, should, like if I have it closer or further away. Well, the, cl the closer you have it, the more I would, you know, from mid chest, to an inch above is like a headshot, basically. Okay. Like, is that so, like so that, that, right that there. yeah, that would be perfect. Right yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I'm still going to have to do some adjustments because I'm trying to figure out how to get this level to where I want it. So yeah, and I put in the chat that, that you, you could look for stands, you know, obviously if you're, you're doing Zoom calls on a phone, you can, I would really suggest getting a tripod. They're super cheap yeah, and, cool. and you can get one that sits on your desk or up and, and some of them um, will also hold an iPad. You might consider just investing in that because it just will make it easier. Yeah, Thank cool. you. it'll make it easier. And also what they're bringing up to the lighting and the lighting is always an issue. And I'm trying to always get non- clear glasses but to get a ring light is what they were saying the business organization i think mm -hmm. charlene i have a couple of ring lights so when you're on it is about like like gina was saying but if she put a, a light well you know about it, if you're a photographer well and, and i was lazy this morning and the reason why i had my my, my, my video on is because i was eating my lunch <laughs> we're about yeah. to start into that so we're saying that when you're out there networking, though, the lighting is a big, you're right. I love um, who, who just said it a few minutes ago. This is a whole for all of us navigating, like, gosh, it's one thing to walk in person. And now we have to go lighting, makeup, lights, camera, makeup, you know, action. Well, we didn't know we were going to have to do it, but it makes an impression. And, so, and, and the colors. So uh, you were, I just want to touch base on that. Uh, we were saying about coloring. Um, so my shirt is kind of a dark, kind of dark gray. Would you suggest more something like a color, what you're wearing that brighter, the bright, your color? Yeah. You want to stand out bright. Okay. And you're in California. 
bright or a solid color. Like be very intentional about what you're wearing and how you're coming across because it makes a difference. So it's again, the whole thing. I could be like, I'm just at home. I don't feel like putting on my lipstick and necklace, but it's like, okay, impressions, hold that space. So dressing the part, having the right lighting and dressing the part in person, you're making that impression. And one more quick story, just to give you some examples because I've been in the networking world for so long. I had one gal, and this was when I was living in Los Angeles, and she would come, this is way before virtual and everything, and she would come to these networking meetings. She was a yoga teacher, and she would come to the networking meetings in her cute little yoga outfit, okay? And I think her intention was like, you know, look at me, and if you do yoga, you can look at me. Well, it wasn't working. And she came to me as a marketing consultant and said, Heidi, you know, I'm going to these networking meetings. I'm meeting all these people. I'm not getting business. And I said, you need to dress the part of the marketing person for your business. So let's say behind closed doors, you are doing plumbing for people or you're doing yoga classes. The idea is, even though it's your own business, show up as the marketing person for your business. So this doesn't have to be dramatic, but I know some of you are saying, gee, then you look at your hair and your lipstick. We could all have a friend give us feedback or a hairdresser. How can we up the inch? How can we up our ante an inch? And how can we do it with, even as you're noticing, just some of the body language stuff? And uh, that's going to be one of my tips too. But I feel, yes, we'll, we'll talk about body language. So let's get into icebreakers. Some of these icebreakers that I'm going to give you today, I love, I use to this day. And I wish I knew them years ago because I was that person of like, I don't know what to say. Or I hear a lot from my ear insurance girl, Sarah. They're like, small talk is boring. I just want to get to the chase. Small talk, though, builds that report that warms people up. So I have several go-tos. I do the same thing over and over again, and I'll just tell you what they work. Some of them may sound cheesy. I'm going to give you my go-tos, and then we can play with them, and you can kind of see which one you might want to try, and even if they're the cheesy ones. So one, I call it the name game. And what I love about, again, back to Dale Carnegie and how to influence friends or I'm mixing it up. Somebody put it in the chat for me. How to make friends and influence people, influence people, make friends. They talk about, he, what he quotes is that saying somebody's name is the sweetest sound. And you'll learn this in sales too. So how many of you forget people's names? My hand is up. How many of you are bad at people's names? When we say somebody's name, name, it also helps us to remember. Because we're building rapport. What are, we, what are we working the room for? Just for fun? No, we're usually doing it to up our career to get business, right? So, but what I love about the name game is usually, if you can think on your feet, if you can come up with something that's, that relates to their name, okay? So, for example, if I'm like, Gina. Oh, I love the name Gina. My sister's name is Gina. So that's, I don't know that many Gina. So is that a family name, Gina? Or how were you named after a family member? Or how'd you get the name Gina? Oh, you want me to answer? Yeah. <laughs> I'm working the room. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Uh, my name, Gina, comes from my mom's name, which is Ginny, but my full name is Gina Nicole. So my dad was Nicholas, my mom was Ginny, and so I became Gina Nicole. But it's not a for it's a form of Regina, but it's technically my given name is just Gina. <laughs> I couldn't have planned that better. Let's give Gina a round. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Opened up. See, here's what happens, little secrets in networking. We go to a networking meeting, even if it's virtual in person. What do you do for a living? I'm an attorney. Oh, what kind of attorney? Family law. Oh, how long have you been in business? 10 years. It's pulling teeth. Look at how she lit up. Look at how we got a sense of her energy. And we had some fun with it, right? So that was perfect. So asking people's names, I do this all the time. A good practice for those of you that are introverts, and I still force myself to do it because I don't always feel like doing it. 
even at the grocery store. You know, the cashiers are working hard and they usually have the name tag right there. I'll be like, hey, Susie, nice to meet you. Or what a great name. Or how's your day going? Practice with those people. Practice getting out of yourself. Practice. Do you know what they do? They always look at me like, oh my gosh, someone's talking to me and not just looking at me as a non-person. But I love the name game. So that works a lot. And usually everyone has a story about their name. Sarah, do you have a story about your name? Sarah, because I always get there's so many Sarahs is spelled in so many different ways. And of course, there's a restaurant here because I, I know you're from Erie called Sarah's. So is that a family name or how did you get the name Sarah? It's not a family name. Um, actually, a funny story behind my name. My dad actually wanted to name me Judy. And um, that didn't fly very well with my mom. So they were both really into Fleetwood Mac <laughs> and um, really fell in love with the song Sarah. And that's how I got my name, although it's spelled differently because um, my mother always says never trust a Sarah without an H. <laughs> I'm getting chill bumps. Is it that tell, tell me that it's the best story? Are you seeing where this goes? And then you get people off guard, but you feel that human connection. In working a room, people's favorite subjects to talk about themselves. Use it. So the name game, I love. The second one I love, and you have to be genuine with it, is a compliment. Now, how do you compliment people? It usually, if somebody's wearing something kind of loud or something kind of funky, I mean, I don't want you to lie if you don't like it. Usually they have a story about it though. It's like, wow, that's a great necklace. Where did you get that? Or Sarah, I'm noticing right now, I love that blue one. It was actually making your, it's like the same color as your eyes. Did you plan that? The, your sweater, the color, is, it, is that part of your, like your color coding? <laughs> It is. Um, my favorite color is periwinkle. Actually, I don't know if you remember that from the crayon box. It was kind of like a grayish blue. Um, and I don't know why it's my favorite color, but it always has been. But over time, I realized that it is the same color as my eye. <laughs> um, and I always get a lot of compliments. So thank you. Ding, ding, ding. You guys are doing, you guys are on point today. But what did I just do? I complimented her with something I was thinking to myself. Also compliments make people feel good. It's so easy. That's like my go-to. Like I am never worried anymore about going to any kind of virtual background, a virtual meetings or in person because people feel special. We don't compliment each other, but the point is not to be just nicey nice. It's to build that relationship. Then you just see, she told me a story. There was, did you remember as a child, we could go down the cram path. Are you guys following what I'm doing here? So the name game is one of my, I have my like little toolbox when I work a room. Do I say something about their name? Do I give them a compliment? My third one is I make a, a comment about the venue, okay? So this could be anything from tomorrow, I'm gonna to be going to Panera Bread. And let's say it's with a new contact, that could be anything like, wow, it's very crowded in here today at Panera Bread. Or gee, I haven't been to Panera Bread in a long time. To something about the venue. But what I love, the people don't say anything on these virtual events. I notice people come on to the virtual event and they just sit there and wait. No, you are now confident networker. So take control, even if the speaker or the hostess doesn't. We all have great excuses right now. Our virtual background. So again, I could say to Kathy, what is that behind you? That kind of looks like interesting um, These are my little flower friends. They're my illustrations. And I custom picture framed those, by the way. I don't know if you knew that, but I framed those myself. I designed and framed it. It's a linen mat with a gold fillet matching frame. Um, it's all arch archival quality. Um, and I painted and framed it. So, yeah. Isn't that fun? But again, picking up on her background. So, you know, well, Sarah, you look like you like to read a lot of books. So again, see what happens is that the person that speaks first shows the confidence because I think it was Sarah that said, and I appreciate your honesty, that you just sit back and kind of wait for others to take control. 
that doesn't get us promoted in business because we want to be seen as credible. So take control. And again, these are easy peasy ways, but just even look at this little fun laboratory today, how people will open up and feel better. So another one that is so simple. See, when I lived in Los Angeles for 20 years, I never talked about the weather. You know, we always say you can always talk about the weather as an icebreaker. Now, why wouldn't I talk about the weather living in Los Angeles? It's always the same. It's always the same. It's always the same. It's always gorgeous, right? So there was something else, though. When I lived in Los Angeles, we talked about all the time, like we do on the East Coast about the weather. What do you think I talked about? What was the common denominator when you live in California or at least Los Angeles? What do you think it is? Come on. Surfing? Tra traffic. The traffic. <laughs> I don't know if I can make it. What time? What's the traffic like? Is the 405 open? Is there parking? Is there that? Everything was about, I got to go early. I'm going to leave before the traffic. I hope, right? Mm -hmm. At least in Los Angeles. So I'm thinking I'm all savvy. I'm the networking queen. So when I moved back to Erie, Pennsylvania, I'm from here originally. So when I moved back, I'm like, I'm not going to use the weather because I have all these networking tips. I use the weather. Because the truth is, it doesn't matter if it's the janitor or the CEO, the weather changes here all the time. And it just works. It's, it's called breaking the ice and breaking the ice. Can you believe it's 58 degrees right now? Oh, can you believe all the snow we're getting? Oh, can you? It works. And when I let go of feeling like I had to be juicier, more creative, it's a great icebreaker. Okay. So who, who, what icebreaker is resonating with you? Which ones have you used before? Do you have any new ones to add? So let's do a little, I call it pop, or pop out some answers here. Um, I'll say something. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm, I live in a beach community, Santa Coast, and we're kind of notorious for our casual dress, you know, like Hawaiian shirts. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of the times people will just go around casually for beautiful uh, display of color and fun because we're at the beach. So every so often I'll mention that to someone. I'll say, hey, that's a great Hawaiian shirt and they just light up. And if I happen to have a Hawaiian shirt on, someone will say that and I say, I have a whole collection and then it just starts up this conversation because someone else will say, I have a collection of Hawaiian shirts. And, and it just starts that kind of openness. But yeah, we're very, uh, very well known for kind of, um, you know, the, that type of apparel. So it makes it easy to just kind of, you know, open up conversation just That's based good. on the Hawaiian shirt. You know, where'd you get it from? You know, um, you know, uh, I got mine here. They don't, they're not, the company went out of business and mine are all vintage now. And so, you know, it, it just sort of like starts a conversation. It does. And that's the whole point of this. We need to get out of ourselves. And actually it's let's, and I want to change your mindset that you're making other people do the work. And the impression is that you could, even though say you're shy and introverted, the impression is that you're not confident or the impression is that you're snooty. There's a lot of impressions that are going on. So it's like making sure that you are seen and helping other people to feel confident, it will be noticed. Does that make sense? So my fifth tip is to ask questions. So aside from the icebreaker, so we did the icebreaker, he, he, he. Then just asking questions. How do we ask questions? I have, I always start, I have five different questions. Because if the person's not helping me along, I move along. But most people will help. And it's just what I always start with. So write this down. Tell me a little bit about. Because if you're like, tell me your life story, they might tell you their life story. You, tell me a little bit about your business. Tell me a little bit about how you got started in your business. Tell me a little bit about the kind of referrals that you're looking for. Tell me a little bit about what you love most about your business. Tell me a little bit about how you got started in your business. We're talking more business networking. Get people to open up. 
we don't have so many, so many people get nervous. And this is one of my things because I thought I had to talk. When I learned to be a good interviewer and to ask others, and when I learned to help other people feel comfortable, it took away my nerves. Because I'm like, I could be a good interviewer, but no longer sitting in the shadows. So asking questions is my fifth bullet. Now, what I want to hit now is number six which is body language and confidence. So we talked about body language a little bit with the smile, but what you wanna do, and we've talked about even body language or how you're seen in our little Zoom boxes. You wanna walk in with confidence to a room and, and just kind of own the room and take up space. Many of us as introverts have been shy. Now, Gina, I'm sure you see this a lot. When you're behind the scenes, don't you see people shrinking a little bit and they're uncomfortable. How, what do you do or tell them to get out of their comfort zone and to kind of own the camera? Can you uh, give us some insight here? Well, um, so I am a branding specialist or a branding photographer. Let's just put it that way. Okay. So this is why I feel ashamed about my background, right? Now. No, stop it. It's fine. You're good. <laughs> but but um, so when I when I work with a client, I, I really kind of find out what the editorial stories we want to tell in advance okay. anyway. So they get really comfortable with me, but I'm very, very high energy when I'm working. And so I think about it. It's about getting them out of their 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 head and talking about the me being the client. So I try to put myself as the client, but I also am very fun and playful. So I make them laugh and relax and I'm very directive. So I think they get really comfortable with me in advance. So I can't tell you specifically what I do because it, every person's slightly different. And, um, but mostly I just, I just start photographing and, and make them, I, they get more comfortable with me shooting and saying, oh, that's beautiful. And I'm very, very, positive so I give them a lot of feedback and I show them the pictures and that I think makes them feel really good about themselves and I think that's a natural part for you just even networking that you're making others feel good we'll talk about the follow-up and things of that nature and those of us that don't have those skills that's what I want you to take on though even what Gina is doing not necessarily taking pictures but helping others to feel good about themselves it takes the focus off of you and being uncomfortable give them a warm smile make them feel special I always say who a body language, when I walk into a room, I don't physically do this, but hypothetically, I walk into any, any room, if it's a cocktail party, if it's a fundraiser, if it's a wedding, and I always look for, I call them the lonely people. Here's who I approach. It's always, there's always people sitting by themselves and they look busy though. That's the problem because they're on their phone. They're not just sitting there like ding, ding, ding. I guarantee you they're sitting there. They don't know what to do with themselves. Those are the people that I approach. I walk over to them. I put out my hand and I always just say my name. I say, hi, I'm Heidi. I just wanted to say hello. Hi, what's your name? Susie. Oh, my sister's name is Susie. <laughs> I start playing the name game or I say, wow, what a beautiful top you have on. Or how do you know the hostess? So it's a one, two, three punch. I put that pressure on myself. I don't walk into a room who I don't know anyone. It's like, who are the lonely people? There's always people alone. And those are the people. Or go to the buffet, stand by the bar. There's people standing there. Look for the uncomfortable people. And even if they look busy, they'll put their phone down. They come from the place of they don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. You will look up. They will look up relieved save them. So this is the empowerment part of today. I want you to kind of switch gears and no longer be kind of the more passive victim. -y. I want you to be the person to help others. So back to body language, a couple little nuggets that I love. One, there's a wonderful body language expert. She does TED Talks called uh, Amy Cudi, C-U-D-D-Y. Have any of you heard of her before? And she does something called the Wonder Woman Pose. And I have a lot of my clients that do the Wonder Woman pose and I do too. And it's just really pumping yourself up. So everybody, you don't have to stand up, but for those of you on camera, and even if you're not on camera, go ahead and wonder. Yeah, there you go. Can't you just feel the difference? Look at that. There you go, Kathy. Good. You, you feel, you, you get bigger than life. Breathe. Like, yes. Thank you. Who yeah, said that? 
That's me. Good. Yeah. And, and you you know, my, my back and my hips aligned so that I was actually more comfortable in my torso and breathing. Just, just doing that feels comfortable. But we want to, it's okay. Many of us were, including myself, I was brought up with children to be seen and not heard. Embrace the energy. I mean, you're not going to walk around or be on Zoom like this, but it's that feeling and the feeling before going into a networking room. The other thing is it's okay to use your hands. Now we're back on the Zoom networking. So everybody give me a hands up. Let me see your hands. So here's what's awkward about Zoom. Because if I'm just talking like a normal person, I'm down here, you can't even see my hands. You want people to see, so it feels awkward, but you want to be connected. And in body language, I'm a body language expert, you want them to see the palm of your hand. You know why? Because that means trust. This goes back to the old days of like cowboys and Indians and why shaking hands to see, are you safe? Do you have a knife or do you have a gun? So what you want to do when you're talking and meeting people and networking, and that's why often I'll be like, hi, everybody, nice to meet you. You don't have to be Heidi. You don't have to be over the top. Be aware of your hands and be aware. It might feel awkward. Everybody give me the hands up here because you're on Zoom. So use your hands to talk. It helps people feel more comfortable. Body language. Okay. So now that's number six. And I'm going to recap these, don't worry. But number seven, I talked about approaching people, approach the lonely people. Now, this is even for the genus, I think you mentioned earlier. You do want to go with a plan. Because if you're like, oh, I went to a networking event. Oh, I went to a virtual networking event. And uh, yeah, it was fine. Nothing happened. Networking with an intention. So my goal, because as an introvert, I've got my little rules that you meet five new people. Five new people. And when I run my networking meetings, which are virtual, Kathy's been to one of my meetings virtually, is in that Zoom room, there's, you know, say there's 20, 25 people, write down the names of the people that you want to meet, whether you like their energy or, ooh, I might have a referral for them or, ooh, uh, we might work well together. Maybe we have a collaboration. Go with an intention, okay? of who you're gonna meet and how many people to meet. Make it a game. And then I'll talk about how to follow up with them. Um, another piece of going into number, by number eight, we're talking about approaching people and on the Zoom room right away, start chit-chatting, don't wait for the host. But I hear a lot of people have challenging saying goodbye. Does anybody have a problem saying goodbye to people at networking? Kathy, you do? Yes. Anybody else? How about uh, Sheila? Anybody else that's online that wants to answer that? Yeah, I have a hard time, you know, I'm in a conversation and, you know, um, how to land it. Do you know what I mean? Like you're, you're talking or whatever, and then maybe it's, uh, I have a tendency, you know, coming in strong and then, you know, maybe you're not having that connection, connection or whatever, and it's starting to fizzle energetically and you're like, you know, then that anxiety kind of, kind of starts coming in and then, you know, how to pull out of that situation or redeem yourself in some way, this <laughs> way, you know, so I'm, I, you know, that's, I notice that sometimes where I go, yeah, I don't, I'm not really, it's funny, um, you know, um, for me, a lot of um, social events is sometimes when people meet someone like myself, that's a, a massage therapist, you know, we're, we're such a society where we care you know, who people are, if you're not, a, you know, a doctor or, you know, a, someone, uh, you know, established in, in, in a community, so to speak. And in some ways, you know, massage therapists, you go, hey, what do you do? And then Susie, they went, went, like, what, this is my own interpretation of the situation where they, they'll like, something like, oh, um, I'm not going to get anything from this particular person or something like that. And so, um, you know, maybe because I, I, you know, my husband is a professor, in society, people will be like, oh, you're a professor. And so I notice a lot of people will focus their energy on him and ask him questions because that's something they can identify with maybe per se. And so sometimes it is hard where you're not in a profession per se that people maybe um, have a lot to ask you or are interested in or whatever. So, um, you know, that's a challenge for me personally, you know, and just, but uh, yeah, trying to redeem yourself in that way and trying to to be more engaging. 
Well, good. You're saying a couple of different things at once. So one, um, how do we say goodbye? Right. People are always like, I'm afraid of hurting their feelings, but you do. It's like, let's just be honest, it's, it's fizzling or there's not a connect. You've given it you know, enough time. So my whole thing is I like the honest approach. Instead of I have to go to the bathroom, they might follow you if you're in person. <laughs> so it's okay to say something like, you know, uh, it's wonderful meeting you. And I'm going to say hello to a few more people before the speaker mm-hmm. starts. Or yeah, if, if appropriate, I'd love to have your business card. We might want to connect. If it's appropriate, you might not want their business card, but it's okay to say goodbye. And again, it's like, you know what? I was wonderful meeting you, Sarah. I'm just going to say hello to a few more people before we get started. So disengage because then we start getting angry and resentful and you're there to work. Networking is work. So that's one thing. Secondly, which goes into my next tip, I'm glad you brought up that I heard two different things. One, how do you make what you sound juicy? So because people will make a first impression, like you said, your husband's a professor and they ask questions, you know, like I'm a massage therapist and they're like, wah, wah. Or (laughs) they feel like they don't need one or I have one, right? Right. So that's going to be my my ninth tip. I want to talk briefly about how we can say what we do with a little more charisma. But one little thing I heard you say that I want to switch today is that putting it on them sort of like, you know, they're not asking me questions. So that's what today is about. We're flipping it. We're not going to wait to hope they ask us questions. People fall in love with us when we make them feel special. So it's flipping it and asking them questions and not taking it personally if right. they're not asking us. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. That's I just wanted to address that. Yeah. So, but you're right. So here's the thing. And this is this is a whole nother seminar. And again, we might do one on, on how to do a, an elevator pitch, basically. Because what you're saying, though, I agree. When we say, I'm just going to touch on this. When we say just the category of what we do, that, that first impression, people make a quick judgment about it not good, bad, right or wrong, that they discount maybe that they need you. So for example, what do you do for a living? I'm a chiropractor. So in your head, you might be like, I have one or I don't like chiropractors. We've cut the impression, right? So Sarah, what do you do for a living? I manage a team of compensation analysts for an insurance company. (laughs) I can't argue with Right? Okay. And, or I'm a photographer. Ooh, I don't want a photographer. Or I have a photographer. I don't need a photographer. So what we do want to do, what I encourage, I'm going to give you a tease on this because this is a bigger conversation, is that you pull people in. It's called verbal advertising in a different way. Kathy, we've worked on this before, haven't we? Did we work on your one-liner a little bit? Because you did it at the last I meeting. We did, yeah. What did you, let's see what, if that still works. So Kathy, what do you do? Hi, I'm Kathy and I'm an artist and I love nature and laughter. I have a little special treat for you. They're my little flower friends. Uh, they're artistic and they're creative. They're natural and they're little flowers that are animated like kids. And they have bodies that are like kids with bright faces and bright petals. And they're just playful and always smiling. And they never cease a chance to bring your spirits up. Oh, I see Gina's giggling about it. And so is Sarah. So the good news is that's juicy right now. Based on the setting, that might be too long. That was good for a commercial, like for networking. But when you say something like, I'm an artist and I have, you know, these little flower friends, something interesting. What I encourage you to do, do you have a one-liner, Gina? If I say to you, Gina, what do you do? Uh, I give people a portfolio of fantastic images that's authentic, that you can use as their own stock photography for their marketing. I'm a brand photographer. Okay, so I like that. So she pulled me in. Here's the game. Not to say the category of your business up front. The minute you say, I'm an interior designer. Oh, that's probably expensive. I'm a massage therapist. Oh, I don't need one. 
So you might say, I help people de-stress, okay? You see that, Marsha? I help people yeah. de-stress, especially during these times for all these people that are sitting a lot on Zoom and things like that. You're almost getting people not. Yeah, I help them out. I'm a massage therapist. So, yes. So, Sarah, how could you be juicier with your one-liner? I'm trying to think of how to say this. Um, I provide leaders with strategies for attracting and retaining talent. Yes. Um, right now, with the great resignation, it's a very important job for the company that I work for. Yes, that pulled me in completely different. So that's, that's a really good point. So but when we go to our networking events, we want to be prepared and have our webinar down because they don't always know what we, they do. You know, one time I told someone I'm a marketing consultant, they're like, oh, you take people grocery shopping? That's great. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I have my one liners based on who I'm talking to. I support women entrepreneurs in building their business and getting new clients. I have a marketing and presentation skills coach, but I don't say up front, I'm a public speaking coach. Ooh. So the last tip, so we have about five minutes because I know that um, Charlene's going to come back on, is the follow-up. This was one of Gina's things. And for everybody. And here's the clincher. We work hard. We get to these networking. We are working in the room. We're walking in. We're smiling. We're saying hello. We're doing our icebreakers. We're asking questions. We're connecting. We're making these great relationships. We're working in the room. We're not staying stagnant. And then we go home and say, was that a waste of time? So what you do the next day, there's no waiting. People are like, oh, I don't want to be pushed your sales. Like, you're just meeting them for coffee. It's one thing. If I'm at a networking meeting, I say to Gina, I need brand and photos. She better call me. We don't have to do a whole song and dance. Let's set up a meeting. I'm talking now about networking follow-up, okay? So here's the language. I met you yesterday at the networking event. And I'd love to find out more about you, more about your service or product. And let's see how we can help each other. So every time I do an event or a networking event, I like say I meet those five people, I'm not gonna wanna meet all of them, but I play a game, I'll pick three of them. Who did I like? So I always have three coffees a week, no matter what. I've been doing this for 25 years. It's kept my business going. Coffees and Zoom coffees are great. You, everyone now is just doing Zoom coffees for a half an hour. You set up a Zoom and we talk a little bit about you. We talk a little bit about me and we just get a connection and then we can decide we want to meet again. But it's powerful. That's where I get most of my business. We get to know each other. If you just meet them like this, like a little networking, then it's not enough. So, Gina, what do you say when you meet somebody now? What's going to be different for you? Tell me some of your follow-up strategies based on what I just said. <laughs> now I'm all freaking out. Yeah. Um, uh, I met you yesterday. Do you remember me? <laughs> Good girl, and yeah. I'd, I'd, love to, I'd love to find out more about what you do in your service and how we can help each other. Perfect. Let's set up a so Zoom. easy. It's so easy. Let's, you see, here's what people do. Here's subtle. I met you, and this is what goes cringe. I met you yesterday at the networking meeting. I want to tell you more about me and my services. Salesy. No, do not do that. So again, this is for networking follow-up. If they clearly say, Kathy, I want to buy your product, you know, I want to book a massage, you don't have to do the song and dance. This is for your follow-up. So because of our follow-up, because I could talk about the subject all the time, I, because I love it, let's just do a brief go around and just share with me now your one takeaway. So what can, what can you do differently today? What was a, a reminder or a aha or a, oh, I'm going to try that or a mindset piece? What are you going to use differently? So let's go around the Zoom room. Sarah, what, what, what will you do differently? 
So I think just going over and introducing myself, finding the, those other people maybe that are similarly situated to I am, uh, you know, to me rather to introduce myself and start a conversation, um, which I can um, kind of sustain by asking more questions. Good. No longer, I'm going to haunt you. No longer wait for other people to approach you. You approach them. Good. Gina. Uh, kind of same. I, I, cause I, um, like Charlene said, I, I tend to go and gravitate towards the people I know, but I want to start looking for those people that are just sort of being shy and sort of subdued and, um, and introduce myself. And I like the name game because I'm terrible at remembering names. And I think that's going to be a really good challenge for me to start practicing. Definitely. Practicing, get people to talk about themselves. That's, get them to feel comfortable. Kathy, what's your number one tip today? Uh, it's something actually I have been kind of working on already. The last time we spoke, you were talking to me about what, uh, what I do, where I'm at when I'm at work to engage people with all these, you know, tips that you've been talking about. I've been applying that to my daily work and it's incredible, a night and day difference, both in my own personal feelings and self and my perspective and my, you know, how I react and interact with people. But exactly what you said, when I talk to people and say something like, oh, you know, what a great shirt or, you know, you know, this is a wonderful place, you know, I hope you enjoy it. And they start talking about all the things that I've experienced in this community, where to go, what's the best place to see. And um, it just really brings a lot of um, camaraderie with people. And I find when we disengage and they go their way and I'm still sitting there at the desk, I find so much more uplifted, like I'm just happier and I feel better about everything. You yeah, know, when I mean, they, it makes a big difference. It's bigger than just saying hello. It's yeah. helping other people to engage and you. And many of us, if we're introverts, we just didn't know or we didn't have the words. So that's what I like to give. So just a couple more quickly because I know Charlene wants to get on. Sheila, is there, can you just tell us one takeaway from today? If you're there, she might have had to leave. And Marsha, what about you, a massage therapist? Um, let's see. Um, there's so many things that you know uh, you put out there. You know, so there's a lot of good takeaways. Um, I like your approach where um, make it like a game. You know, and then you're going in and you're saying, okay, you know, go into a room or in the Zoom and. Um, you know, uh, pick out those three people and, you know, practice, practice, practice. Um, part of me just coming on Zoom um, is, you know, I need to re-engage and learn these new skills. And, um, you know, everyone's kind of in the same situation where, you know, um, we're all out there, especially in, you know, knowing that all people that go into these settings are probably nervous as well, but um, making people feel special and, you know, asking, you know, about what they do, or like you said, a lot of times I have a tendency to um, pull back too much and then be more in a um, more assertive position when you're meeting different people. And, and usually when you do do that, like you said, when you even at like, a, if I go grocery shopping, even practice with the, the checker, because that it is true that, you know, a lot of people are always, they light up when you ask them how they're doing or, you know, um, what their name is or, you know, how their day is going is, uh, so coming from that angle, I think, uh, is my biggest takeaway and just practice, practice, practice. That is and practice yeah. on those people. So good. Well, you guys have been amazing. I appreciate there's a small group. I know there'll be people watching the replay and Charlene, I'm going to pass the baton back on to you. So thank you so much for the opportunity today. Thanks Heidi. Thank you, Heidi.